under without a doubt the worst NBA owner of all time, James Dolan. Knicks fans have watched their team be run into the ground. I'm always respectful on this channel. There's no reason to have much respect for James Dolan. Here's why that's the case. My reaction to the Porzingis trade as well as a complete history of how Knicks owner James Dolan has destroyed his NBA team. Quick shout out to Josh who says Dallas plans to add Vucevic this offseason and then projects the stats for the Mavs big four. He gets his name up on the board here in Community Speaks. Thanks for all the great answers. Stay tuned for today's question to get next video shout out. The argument could be made that Porzingis forced his way out of New York and he needed to be traded. Also due to the fact that he's about to hit free agency. But from day one, they didn't treat Porzingis like a superstar. They wanted Melo to lead the way. There was the Phil Jackson beef, the constant coaching changes, and most of all, not surrounding him with any real complimentary elite talent. Bottom line though, you can match any contract he's offered this offseason. You didn't have to trade him. But Dolan just can't let go of his ego, apologize for all that's happening, try and make the potential superstar talent happy. Instead, Mark Cuban's Mavs move into their winning era. I made a Mavs video yesterday, by the way, link in the description for that. But New York needed to draft a second star for Chris Stapps. Maybe Dennis Smith Jr. can let this new team elevate his career. They also get two first round picks in this move. So this is leaps and bounds. The best move I'll talk about today, though that's not saying much. This has little to do with Melo. He was a professional throughout his time in New York for the Knicks to even get prime Carmelo Anthony, which was unreal for a few seasons, don't get me wrong, but it took giving away all your young core to the Denver Nuggets. Instead of scouting talent for the draft and building up your young roster, you give it all away for a player who would soon drastically decline and you would have to pay a five-year, $124 million contract in 2014. Of course, after that, was when he started to decline. Denver built up into a playoff team right after that, delaying their rebuild. Then there's Isaiah Thomas, who had just came off an impressive stint as the Raptors president. He was given full control of the franchise by James Dolan. His stint, however, was known for signing young, unproven NBA players to insane amounts of money over a long stretch of time. The Eddie Curry trade, however, was the signature awful move of this all trading away two future first round picks, which turned out to be LaMarcus Aldridge and Joaquin Noah. This killed the Knicks chances. And by the end of his tenure, he had 56 wins and 108 losses. Allen Houston specifically was a really bad signing. Six years, $100.4 million. This contract made him virtually untradeable. And again, it's the greed of Dolan just reaching into his pockets too far in a negotiation, this time for a guy who, to be fair to Allen Houston, was a very solid scorer. But for seven seasons, he had the same production, around 17 to 20 points a game. And to pay him as a number one option, he obviously won't complain. And Knicks fans may be mad at this and just want to blame Allen Houston for the lack of production. But that's unnecessary pressure to put on a complimentary player. It doesn't get any worse after this, Knicks fans, but the most nightmarish instance in this video of dysfunction is without a doubt Phil Jackson's presidency. He came in and instead of rebooting the Knicks reputation and attracting free agents like he was supposed to, he represented how dysfunctional the organization really was. He's probably the main reason why Porzingis wanted out of New York. If you want all the blasphemy from Phil Jackson's time in New York, just search on YouTube Stephen A. Phil Jackson rant after this video, of course. There's no team New York has helped more than my Toronto Raptors. Raps GM Masai Ujiri first gets Dolan to take a chance on Bargnani, who was a proven team killer. He couldn't play defense and really only cared about getting up his shot. But the Knicks accept this trade. The Raps clear valuable cap space and also receive a 2016 first round pick and two second round picks. Toronto drafted Jakob Pertl with the pick they received. He was just used to get Kawhi Leonard, but James Dolan wouldn't accept a trade six months later after the Bargnani trade to receive a player that would end up becoming a five-time All-Star with Toronto, and that could have easily been in New York. In late 2013, Toronto nearly tore down their roster after trading Rudy Gay. The Knicks organization, by declining a trade for Kyle Lowry, 
let Toronto take control of the Atlantic Division. But whether it's on my list or not, what's the craziest move in the James Dolan area or the craziest moment in the James Dolan era? Best answer gets the shout out next video. Subscribe if you're new. Thumbs up if you enjoyed. Thanks to the world for watching. This has been D-Flow. See you next video.